And this happens in either direction, up or down, in any combination of sequences. It's still trending. 75% of the time, the market is not trending. Most of the time, it's not decisive. Most of the time, the market is being efficient. There's just the same amount of buyers as there are sellers. And they're agreeing upon price. So the market is not moving. The opposite of a trending market. Now let's talk about time frames. This is where the tricks really start. Because time frames are all relative to the time you're trading. Time overlaps and envelops into itself. It envelopes into itself. It, time frames are tricky because the time itself is an illusion. There's no real definition of time. It's just a tool. Time is a measurement that we use just to sequence events to add order, to show when something took place in comparison to when other things have taken place. So for right now, we're simply looking at trading at a time frame where we are comfortable. And we're going to talk more about that. Right now, we're, we're really in the beginning, so I'm really being very basic about this. But time is where the tricks start to come into play. Every tick, every single tick is going to show up in every time frame. That's how these time tricks start to play out. The five ticks on a, on a daily, <coughs> excuse me, five ticks, just five ticks, they're going to barely be seen on a daily chart. Monthly or weekly chart, you, you won't even notice them. But they're there on the price chart in the bar. Those five ticks help create the bar on all the time frames. At the extremes on a one minute chart, the vehicle could be trending, a, a, a very decisive bar. However, conversely, those same five ticks on a daily time frame, like this one, may help to create a very indecisive, non trending bar on that daily time frame. You see the tricks that can be played by using time. And we're going to talk more about how to, how to actually manage that when we actually get into the real strategy part of this footprints price has a memory it leaves breadcrumbs all around footprints in the sand on any chart there are areas of obvious indecision and doubt on traders and this plays out and is seen as the non-trending range the market is efficient Buyers and sellers agree on this price. But when that indecision has cleared and price leaves this point, it's going to continue to its next destination, its next level of indecision and efficiency. That particular concept is going to become very important when trying to be selective about your trade setups. These significant areas of difficulty and indecision can give you a heads up to where price is likely to stall or reverse. These selective setups allow you to win 40 or 50 binary option trades consecutively without any loss. You're going to have to, you're going to have to pick a side. You're going to have to have your plan ready from the start. You should know whether you're going to buy or sell after you've done your analysis. If you don't do that and you try to play both sides for the average trader, you're only going to lose money just twice as fast. The market itself is mostly indecisive. You have to be convinced and decided. You got to pick your side, stick with it. I only look for truth in the market. Only truth. Where there's a trend, there lies truth. What are the big boys and girls doing? What are the big boys and girls doing with all that money? 
Look at the trends. Remember, the institutions can't hide their hands. Once you and I know which way the market has decided to move, that's the direction we want to trade in. Is it trending or not? The most basic issues we traders face is deciding whether a bar is trending on our time frame. You got to remember, 75% of the time, the market is not trending for our preferred time frame. However, it could be trending on some other time frame. If you can't tell what it's doing, then it's not trending. You see how easy that is? If you can't tell what it's doing, then it's not trending. If there's a body on the candlestick and it shows the close trending away from the open, that's the trend ball. No matter the, the direction, just a decisive move in one direction. So a number of strong trend balls in a succession, that's the definition of a healthy trend. All right. We're looking to trade in this environment in the direction of that major trend. Doesn't matter what type of system you're using today. You're only going to improve your trading by making it more simple, stripping away things and keeping it more simple. All right. Now I want to get into what I call Forex shorthand for binary options trading. This is what I use to look at the market quickly and make a decision on what the next move I should make to be profitable. We're going to dive right into the strategy of using this Forex shorthand to trade binary options. Shorthand was a, a tactic used before computers to take notes faster. Notes are ideas. Shorthand then is a skill to jot down ideas quickly. So with shorthand, we can convey more information from less writing. I like to use Forex shorthand to read the market quicker and to make better decisions. This way, we can win more trades consecutively. We're going to start with the first complete thought in our shorthand. Think of this like learning to say hello or good morning in a foreign language. This will be your, your first profitable foray in the binary options market. This is what we will be looking for. These are the parts that's going to create our, our first sentence. I broke each part down into symbols for you. All right, simple symbols. And I'm going to go over exactly what these, these symbols are. All right. Four parts of this four parts to our idea, all right? One, two, three, four, all right? Let's go over the parts through the system. We're gonna just quickly discuss what we have to work with here. First, we got a trend, right? We only trade in a trend